What's up, everybody? This is the Digital World Podcast. And today we're going to keep the conversation going about Gary Gensler and the SEC. Now, I have this analogy. And the analogy is goes like this. Have you ever had an ex-girlfriend that you thought was the greatest? She was there for you, but she really wasn't there for you. She didn't let you go out and connect with your friends, to meet other friends. She she kind of kept you in this closed box. And you were in a silo almost. And you couldn't connect with other silos for a lack of a better word. So you're in this little bubble. Now, until you were able to move on through various reasons, and you started dating another girl who did the opposite. She encouraged you to connect with other friends. She helped you thrive in that environment. She no longer kept you in this small little box, a little bubble with thin walled gardens. She allowed you to be interoperable. You can mingle with other groups. And she encouraged that. Now that's kind of the way I see the SWIFT network and what Ripple is trying to accomplish. SWIFT network being that ex-girlfriend that kept you within a bubble. Didn't want you to connect with other groups. She only wanted you in that small little group of yours. Never really seeing your friends or meeting other people. She just didn't have what it took to help make you thrive in those other environments. But this new girlfriend, which is comparable to Ripple, is allowing you to be able to connect with other groups, encouraging you to get out of that shell of yourself and go meet other people, creating this world where you get to network with all sorts of individuals. Now today... I want to go over a document I found that details what SWIFT is. And it's called the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. It's a PDF. And I want to go to, bear with me, 19 of this document, page 19. Now, let's read what what, what SWIFT is about. It says, SWIFT is, has been used over the past 40 years, so in the 70s, so almost 50 years, and has served the financial services sector as a proprietary communications platform, provider of product services, standards developer, and conference organize, organizer, CYBOS. Okay, it, it was founded to create efficiencies by replacing Telegram and Telex for international payments. Now it forms a core part of the financial service infrastructure and it is widely regarded as the most secure, trusted third-party network in the world, serving 212 countries, over 10,000 banking organizations, institutions, and corporate customers. And it has maintained the status of industry cooperative, thus presenting an opportunity to study broader themes of globalization and governance in the financial services sector. Now, SWIFT, and this is in 2014, so these stats may have changed uh, over these past few years. However, we see that SWIFT is a very important messaging network system because that's what its primary role is, is as a message carrier. So it's not actually moving value like what Ripple's trying to accomplish. No, this is just a messaging system that allows for other banks to communicate with each other Now, it's interesting because this is an antiquated system. It's old. It's hard to um, move money around. Yeah, you can probably send instant messages, but that doesn't mean that money gets there instantaneously or it doesn't settle instantaneously. Okay? It might take some time. But what Ripple is doing is creating uh, a technology that allows for that instantaneous settlement. It's like the internet. 
you can move um, packets of information instantaneously, but uh, in, in comparison, you can't do that with money. And that's why this is what's being called the internet of value, being able to you to move money or value at the speed of how you move information. We can send an email in under a second. But when you're trying to send some money across, you know, from the United States to, you know, Europe, it could take a day or several days to get there. Now, let's see what Gary Gensler has to say uh, about this. And shout out to Real XRP Boy and Sir XRP for um, putting this on Twitter. Now, let's see what he says. Yes. Much of the cost is because you're moving from one ledger to another. Sorry to get sort of down into the accounting, but you're moving from one fiat currency to another fiat currency, which are in essence kept on two different ledger systems called two different commercial banking systems in, did you say Tanzania to Nigeria? So you have two different ledger systems. And, and over the centuries, a uh, whole process of Nostra accounts and the setting up of, of, of the account base to do that. It can be done on blockchain um, and between two central banks, but the thinking is, is that you might need some bridge currency between Tanzania and Nigeria, and there's a number of, 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 of uh, blockchain technologies that do that, that basically, instead of SWIFT, which is just a messaging system, and then the banks have to somehow pre-fund in Nostra accounts, I hope I didn't lose too many people, but this is about the technology of banking, not the technology of blockchain. Um, but to go between Tanzania and Nigeria, you need, you need somebody to bear some counterparty risk that the ledgers both move and are adjusted at the same time. And usually it's a bank that is in both countries. You could use blockchain, but you, the current thinking is you need a bridge currency in between. And that bridge could be a stable value that's, that's you know backed by the U.S. dollar or the euro. It could be a currency even like uh, Ripple has an alternative. It's just piloted in May, so it's it's not yet up in any enterprise-wide level. Um, but that you might need something to, to basically hop, skip, jump. Tanzi I don't know the currency in Tanzania. But Tanzanian currency, to skip to Nigeria, you might need something in the middle, which is now he he put it as plain as I mean I can as plain as I can even put it but the idea is to have a more efficient system in which you can transport value at the speed of transporting information and I want to show here oh whoops I want to show here Another section in which, in the Cybos um, forum or the Cybos meeting that they have, one of the young women involved, Heidi Miller, um, talked about uh, how innovation is very slow in this industry. And look what she says: "Is an industry, quite frankly, we're a very long way from straight through payments." Constrained by regulatory and compliance requirements, by our own legacy investments, by the legacy investments of others, and by the glacial pace at which we banks tend to move. As an industry, we're very, very long away from SWIFT. And this was in 2004. Please forgive the puns. We support far too many redundant infrastructures and networks, too many proprietary standards, too many middleware platforms, too many legacy systems, too many products that should probably have been SWIFT into the dustbin years ago. And this was in 2014. Okay, and I am told that Swift became so successful because they replaced the old Telex machines and helped us automate our back offices. And the Swift industry, the Swift saved our industry billions of dollars. But more importantly, it made international payments faster, cheaper, and more transparent. Now, let me ask you a question: With Ripple, and it and the use case that XRP provides, it's solving all these issues as well, but on a more grand scale. Something that hasn't been seen before. And this was all the way in 2004. 
I wonder what her thoughts would be today. I hope this podcast has brought you some value. Like and subscribe. This is the Digital World Podcast, and I'll see you on the next episode.